the homework, uh, give the function change heading a more accurate name. Uh, it is not changing heading at all. Um, I'm actually going to call it handle submit because that's what its job is. Its job is to handle the submission of the form. Um, and I'm doing that partially because I'm thinking ahead. Add flick might, or add movie or something like that might seem like a more logical name, but to me, that's not even its job. Its job is to just handle submission and then send other messages other places to get other things done. So maybe add flick should even be a separate thing from that. Like handle submit, its job is to determine that it should add the dang flick. But actually adding the flick is maybe the job of another function down the road. Um, so it's pretty common for me to name event listeners things like handle whatever the event was. Because I try to keep functions doing one job and one job only. So if it's handling an event, handling event is all it should be doing. Unless it's very simple. Um, so that's what I'm going to name it for now. But that's fine that you, that you probably named it uh, something else. So the next part, uh, add a second field to the form and display the value of that field in the list. So I don't know. Which Chris, uh, your rating, your year, uh, what do you think? What do you want to do? Which Chris, the year, what do you want to do? Which Chris? Which Chris? All right. Should that just be a free form thing? Should it be like a drop down or something? Oh, or what if you did, what if you did Superman the movie with Christopher Reeve? That's right. Or, yeah. Anyway, sure. All right, let's do it. Let's add another, let's add another text field. Type equals text. Name equals um, Chris name. Sure. And I'll go ahead and uh, put it on multiple lines here because we're going to add a placeholder and all that stuff too. So just so there's room because my, uh, my window is only so wide. So let's put a placeholder in there. Oh, man. Now what's going to happen? Yeah, that's... That's acceptable. Cool. Probably need more, more room for the movie name than we do for the Chris name. So maybe I need to uh, fiddle with my uh, style a little bit. I'll just tweak it just a tiny bit. So if I give my, um, if I give my second input a class, then I can target it separately from the other one. So I'll say um class equals um smaller and in my css i have all this stuff for my any input of type text now here's a selector that we haven't used before but this is a fairly advanced selector so this is an attribute selector you can figure out how it works right so this is an input with a type of text or a type of number i want to style them the same way so not just any input will get picked up by the selector and again the same selectors work inside query selector. It's the same exact syntax. So this says any old input of type text should have this rule for uh, re-spacing the, uh, the leftover space at the end. But I want to add a slightly more specific rule if it is an input of type text that also happens to have a class of smaller. So you can combine things like this, just like we could say um, input.smaller. We know how to do that, right? We know how to combine the tag name and the class. Just don't put any spaces between them. But you can totally combine that with an attribute selector too. Just smash all these things together and it'll look for something that has to match all these criteria for this rule to affect it. So if that's the case, I want flex to be two instead of four. Let's see how that looks. There. And now it allows more room for the movie name than the Chris name. I'm satisfied with that. All right, so we've added a new text field. That's another requirement satisfied. Then we want to display the value of that field in the list. Very good. So when we submit it, that should be f.chrisName.value, right? Uh, 
So let's say const Chris equals f dot Chris name dot value. I suppose I'll call it Chris name since I was not here. F dot Chris name dot value. So then I could just append it to the text content for the for the list item. I can say like item text. Well, hey, I could use my uh, my fancy um, template literals, right? Remember those? So then I could do something like this, starring Chris, Chris name. And reflect, Gotga starring Pratt. There you go. Got guest starring Chris Pratt. Cool. Another piece of homework checked off. But for bonus credit, we want to display the second field in a separate HTML element than the flick name. And the example I gave, uh, we just put each one in a span or something like that. But both inside the list item. So you see what I'm doing there? I'm still just creating the one list item, but I'm creating uh, two spans inside that list item. So this is where my function starts to get a little long. No big deal, though. Those are just two more elements. We know how to create elements now. We're old pros at this. That is to say, we've done it exactly once before. But I think it's all it takes to be a pro. OK, so we created our LIs, but um, I want spans inside those LIs. So okay, here's where I'm going to do instead. Here's my flick name. Uh, now I'll make a span for flick name. So const um, flick span equals document dot create element. What kind of element? A span. And flick span dot text content equals flick name. So I get my Chris name out of there. I'm going to make my Chris span equals document dot create element. What kind of element? It's just a span. Uh, Chris span dot text content equals Chris name. Does this make sense? Do you understand that this is what, what I kind of had in mind when I showed this example in the homework? Okay. So every time you see a new tag, that's a new element, right? And what we learned yesterday was how to create new elements out of nowhere. So all you need to know to do that is what the name of the element is. And that's a span, right? So we can create one of those just by doing that. And then we want Jurassic World to appear in there. So I'm going to have to set the text content, right? So create element span, we'll just create an empty span. Setting its text content, we'll put the text in there. And I want the text out of the form. So I need two of these things. Whoops. I need two of these things, one for the First text field, one for the second. So twice I'm going to call document.create element span. Once for each of those. And then I set the text that's inside of it. And then what do I do with them? They're not on the page yet, right? I got to stick them inside the li, the li that I was already going to create. So I did create element li. We did that yesterday in class. So then how do I get them in there? What do I do? Who can tell me? Go for it, Troy. We append child. Append child, right? So I want those to be inside the LI, so they're children of the LI. And I named the LI item, which I did mostly to make the point that you don't need to name it the same thing as the tag name. Item.append child flick span and item.append child Chris span. Let's try this again. So we've got Captain America, the first Avenger, Katfa, which Chris? That was Evans. There we go, Katfa Evans. So look at this. Let's inspect that. We've got the two spans, but they're not styled differently, right? That's the that's the next level of bonus credit. But by golly, we've got them in separate spans, and that's something.
Does that help? Cool. <clears throat> so again, this, this function is now getting a little long, and it's giving me some ideas for how I would break it up. Um, but before we do that, let's uh, see if you can style them each differently. Let's do that before we start adding more functions to the mix. So questions about what we just did? So what did I do since my last commit? Add Chris name field to the form and the results and the list. Cool. And we get what I'm doing every time I pop this thing open. We're adding another checkpoint in our history because we just accomplished a new feature, right? So I want to be able to get back to this, and I want to be able to see how I did it if I forget later because we're going to do a lot of stuff the next two and a half weeks, and you're probably not going to remember how we did each step. So it's nice to be able to look back through your history and see here's exactly what changed between this one and that one. Cool. And I push it so that it actually ends up on GitHub. 